This year was the year that I was homeless. I lost my dad in five months, and I had no job. Woohoo! Would that not just bring you to your knees? Wow, what a shitty year. And it was the best year of my life. So I'm going to share a little bit of a story of why it was the best year of my life. Uh, in the end of January, my, not to say that my dad's cancer was the best part of my year, because it wasn't. But ultimately, when my dad was diagnosed with stage four cancer at the end of January, we didn't know how long he had. And I really struggled with trying to figure out why I wasn't in a rush to go see this man. And if you've had a chance to be there for my Mo Mondays, my very first Mo Mondays, I talked about how this was a man that had kept me at arm's length my entire life because I am hearing or hard of hearing and he's deaf and I didn't belong in his world. So a big part of my going through the journey this year with him and his ultimate passing was trying to reconcile who I was in his world. We were so broke that I actually had to go onto Twitter and just say, listen, you all know me as a game developer, but I need some cash shaking down my Twitter followers. I need money and I can't tell you why. Now that's kind of a weird thing to put out there on the internet, don't you think? Right? I didn't want to do the GoFundMe, and I didn't really want my own Facebook crew to know what was going on in my life because I had deep shame about the fact that I was broke. And so these lovely people, the next morning I woke up and there was $1,500 in my PayPal account. I didn't even have to tell them why, why I needed it. I just said, listen, I'm in a bind and I re really need your help. And that was, that enabled me to be able to go and see my dad. And I did eventually see my dad. And the beautiful thing is, even though we've had conflict all of this time, and I'm still working through grief because I don't think grief has a timeline, is that when I left, my final words to him were that I loved him. And instead of signing, I love you, he spoke those words to me. And as that, that's the moment that I have with him that will stay with me forever. So hey, what about this being homeless thing? Well, I think we can all agree that having a home is a really nice thing to have. And I have lived in a tiny little shack for seven years up in Barrie because I had this dream of starting our own company. And that means sometimes that you make huge sacrifices and you go without because you wanna, like, you wanna do the startup thing and you wanna be gritty. And our landlord said, yeah, um, that apartment we've been renting to you for six and a half years is illegal, and we'd like you to leave. And I said to myself, I think that there's a gift in this. Now, normally, that would not be the first response you have when somebody's going to kick you out of your apartment that you've been in for six and a half years. And I went, it's Barry. Like, come on. I thought there would be more mean laughter about that. <laughs> it's Barry. Um, and so we just, I said to my husband, I know this sounds crazy, but for seven years we have been guided by some divine intervention that has brought our startup further and further along. We got to just trust. I think this is going to work out. And so we packed up our apartment, moved a storage unit that we'd had for seven years because it was such a tiny apartment we couldn't fit our old stuff in. We threw it all into a 10 by 20 storage unit and put the rest in the car. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're homeless. What's going on here, honey? No, no, no. You see, I had a hashtag. Story C to C. I had this crazy idea that we were not going to just be homeless, but we were going to be nomadic adventurers. Doesn't that have a better ring to it? Right? Have a little marketing campaign around that. Sure, every stop that we went, I made sure to plan that we had speaking engagements because as far as the world was concerned, nobody needed to know that we were homeless. Just the people that you can count on. Now, when you think about giving, it feels really good to give, right? Don't worry, I'm not gonna like pass out the hat. We're good now, <laughs> we're good. I, but I think we can agree, it feels really good to give. And there were some amazing people in our life which I often refer to them as my barn raisers. And if you're lucky enough, now who, hands up if you don't know what a barn raiser is. All right, this is a beautiful thing. In the Amish tradition, 
when you need a barn or a house raised, you tell everybody in the Amish community that this is happening on this day, and they all show up, they drop what they're doing, and they help you raise that barn. We don't have enough barn raisers in our lives. Like, we don't talk about barn raising, we don't talk about community building, and man, our people showed up for us. Two months of couch surfing, three nights in a, what do you call those, barca lounger? I don't recommend a barca lounger for three nights. But we got to travel all of Eastern Canada and the Eastern United States, have speaking engagements. Nobody knew that we were homeless. And you know what's really crazy? When you hit that bottom, we both said as we got into our friend's cabin for the week, wow, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't have jobs. We don't know what the future's like. And I've never felt more free. It is scary and exciting. And so I want to encourage you to think about when you're coming across these difficult times, that there are always going to be opportunities. It's all about how you frame the experience. Homeless, nomadic adventurer. And we had these people, had I not been willing to be vulnerable on social media and say that I needed help, because honest, I want to get a show of hands. How many of you would like other people to know what your financial situation is? <laughs> wow. OK, so you get it. It's embarrassing. You don't want people to judge you. And so we didn't say anything publicly about being homeless. Listen, I made that into a chapter of the book that's coming out next year. I'm going to milk that for all it's worth because we have survived it. And so that was the interesting thing about it. And because I was willing to be vulnerable, it gave space for people to give. I know that seems really strange. It feels weird to receive people's generosity, but if you don't create opportunities for people to be generous, they can't be generous. And what we saw was people showing up to pay our rent, buy us groceries, put us up for months at a time. We got new jobs out of it. We got new contracts out of it. And I don't know, there was some kind of miracle that happened sometime around the time that my dad had passed and things were starting to settle down. A job came out of the blue. We're now teaching at the top game design program in Canada. Like, really? How did this happen? We were at the bottom. But there's a beautiful thing about hitting that bottom place, right? Once you hit bottom, there's no place to go but up. And I'll say that we are would still be homeless if it weren't for one particular person. This woman, who was a friend of a friend, said, you know what, I believe in you, I believe in your mission, and God, I believe in your resilience. Like, look what you've been through. And by the way, that's just this year, you should have heard last year. <laughs> Whew, that was a doozy. I want to help you, I want you to not be homeless anymore. And this woman, a complete stranger to us, over bacon and eggs, dropped a huge chunk of money on us and said, I don't want you to be homeless anymore. I'm still stunned by that act of kindness and generosity. We're not homeless anymore. We're in a beautiful home. And I bought my very first Christmas tree for the first time in 24 years. And it's a sucker. It's huge. It's beautiful. And it looks like it belongs in the four seasons. And I'm telling you, I'm going to leave that sucker up all year round to remind me that Christmas is every single day, that there is grace and gratitude to be found in being fully present and to being kind and receiving of other people. So I want to leave that with you, is it's not easy to admit when you are down. But there are such amazing people in your life that you probably don't even realize that want to lift you up. So make sure you give them the space to be full of grace for your Christmas miracle. Thank you.